My name is Ethan McMillan. I joined uh, Beta Upsilon Chi in 2014 as part of the Alpha Kappa chapter at University of Michigan. I grew up as a Christian. I had, you know, Christian parents. Grew up in a great Christian home. When I got to college, I was looking for for brothers that I could kind of connect with in, in a deep and meaningful way. And and not having that immediate, immediate structure around me of family and friends was definitely something that that I knew I would need if I wanted to keep my faith and and, and to grow in my faith in college. I had heard about uh, Beta Upsilon Chi from somebody else and. Uh, kind of thought it was going to be a sham, but as I went to Open Chapter and Rush Week uh, and really got to know the guys, I realized that this is a good organization and a group of guys that, that really cared and, and really uh, were going to help push me in my faith. We all pledged uh, during our sophomore year of college, and by the time I was starting my sophomore year, I was pretty um, pretty disillusioned with Greek life in general on college campuses from what I had seen here at U of M and I had had a conversation right before I started pledging with my dad who was visiting me and I told him, I don't, I don't think there's any possibility that I would ever join a fraternity or have any interest in doing that. And then uh, I ended up calling him just a couple nights later and was like, hey, I think I'm gonna pledge to this fraternity called BYX. And, and part of that was I knew that I needed a community um, that was centered on, on Christianity and my faith. I knew that I needed to be uh, strengthened by people around me who were also interested in pursuing the Lord. Being a member in Bucks was a ton of fun between brotherhood events, participating and hosting those, and then actually our junior year being able to get into the Bucks house um, here on campus, that was awesome. So uh, that was kind of a unique experience that we were able to have being able to be in a house together. Through Bucks in college, I, uh, I definitely grew a lot spiritually. It was also just really good to have um, guys who were only a couple of years ahead of me, you know, just basically the, the one step up, you know, the seniors uh, who, who could kind of look back and say, hey, we've, we've gone through this now and we know what it's like and we want to encourage you. And I guess as a man, uh, Bucks is really encouraging as well. Uh, it's just good to see um, men who care. We always talked about uh, Bucks was growing boys into men and then making, we always like to joke, making cute dads, right? Like guys that uh, care about the right things and that who, who love well and who lead well and who uh, will take the, take the path of servant leadership that Christ did. And I feel like that was something that was really encouraging to see, you know, not only the guys around me striving for that, but definitely the guys in front of me who, who exemplified that in the way that they lived their lives and the way that they served us. Transitioning to life after being an active member of the fraternity now as an alumni, I've seen really that same thing. The, the same importance that we placed on Christian community was and, was and has been huge, I think, for all three of us as we've gone into the real world. I remember when I graduated, there was a time where in college it was like, okay, I just need to get through the next you know four years or however many years and then get a job and then go and begin working and pursuing Christ with my life. But you know, it was kind of like I graduated and all of a sudden I wasn't thinking with a deadline in four years, but rather I've got my whole life ahead of me. And there was a lot of questions to say, what does this look like to dedicate my life to the Lord and be the man of God that I want to be and that I know he's calling me to be? And what does it mean with regards to uh, the specific jobs I want to take and to leading or beginning a family and all these different questions. And I was really thankful through all of those transitions to have good friends whom I knew I could call, as Ethan said, at any time in college, um, the three of us actually lived in the Bucks house. We were together academically in school, so that kind of helped a little bit. But it's funny because after college, we were able to develop a closer relationship really because of um, how the community and groundwork that we had established in Bucks allowed us to be really open and transparent with each other. Mm -hmm. Talking through the very legitimate struggles that we were going through, don't get me wrong, thermodynamics in college wasn't a lot of fun, but coming into adulthood and having to deal with, okay, I don't know anybody in this area and I need to find a church. Um, and on top of that, I'm having some difficulties in my relationship. I'm having some um, difficulties in the way that I'm trying to present myself as Christ-like in front of my coworkers and fellow employees. So to be able to come together in kind of a smaller cell-like group, that was really transformative in us allowing to be more transparent with each other and more honest and open with each other.
Growing up, I struggled a lot with uh, lust, as a lot of guys do. Got addicted to uh, pornography on my, on my parents' computer at a young age and, and dealt with that through all of middle school and high school um, coming into college. And in college, I, I noticed that trend continue. Um, there was definitely a lot of ways that Bucks helped in that you know, there was guys around me who were going through the same thing that could encourage me and that I could encourage them. But there was, there was still this struggle that continued throughout all of college for, for me and many of my you know, brothers. Near the end of college, started dating a girl, later got engaged, and then eventually, um, during my last year of college, we, we got married. That struggle was still present in my life. It uh, came back and, and recurred in, during my marriage. There was a lot of, a lot of different issues um, within, within our marriage that I think led to her making the decision that she did, and, and I, for my part, disagreed with the decision that she made to, to pursue a divorce. One of the issues that I knew that, that I had that I took responsibility for was um, still a struggle with, with pornography. While we were still married, came to a couple of my brothers, Sean and Austin, and said, look, this is something that I'm struggling with, and I don't know if you're struggling with it right now because we don't really talk about it anymore, but I need help. Um, and I found this resource, New Hope for Sexual Integrity, that, that really points in a positive direction, and I've spoken to uh, the guy who wrote the book um, and who organizes it, and, and he's encouraged me that if I can find some brothers basically to do this with me uh, and go through this resource together, it would be very uh, edifying for, for all of us and, and really help us to conquer that sin that has been so prevalent in, in my lives and many guys' lives. Ethan kind of came to us with this proposition and was just like, hey, I found this awesome resource that really requires a heavy level of commitment and intentionality and just through our relationships that we had developed in college, we're like, absolutely. Just to know that no matter what you came forward with, they were going to love and support you. That was such a reassuring feeling to know that even in your most um, internal and your most personal struggles, I mean, sharing that, you were gonna be met with love and appreciation and um, just the grace of God. Basically one day I was, I was just sitting in my apartment one morning um, uh, working on some stuff and I just got a phone call from her. Uh, she said, hey, just so you know, the papers are on the way uh, and there's nothing you can do. Um, we, we talked very briefly. I, you know, I told her that uh, I did not want to get divorced, that this was not my desire and I didn't think this is what God wanted for us. Um, and she, she had made her mind up at that point. I then you know, reached out to some of, my, some of my friends, I think just in a text and, and said, hey guys, like, this is what happened. I don't know what to do. I'm very confused. I'm very perplexed. I'm just sad and angry and disappointed and you know, all, basically all the bad emotions you can feel at one time. Within 30 minutes, Austin and Sean showed up at my door and just basically walked in you know, <laughs> without me saying anything and, and just gave me a hug and, and sat down and just said, let's pray uh, and, and what can we do and we want to be here with you. And that was a moment that I'll definitely never forget. Those guys were there for me and those guys cared and those guys were were real brothers and that they showed up when I needed them and uh, even though you know I had nothing to give nothing to offer you know they didn't they didn't come for anything besides to love me that was a moment that that Christ's love was really exemplified to me through others in a way that you know maybe I wish I didn't have have to experience but I did experience it uh, and it was uh, gonna be an impact that I'll never forget one of Austin's favorite Bible verses that he brought up to us uh, in Proverbs says, uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend. And I'd say never did I understand the truth of that verse until going through and being so close in our um, commitment with one another. The other verse that comes to mind, Psalms 133 verse one. I think a word that probably doesn't get kind of zoomed in on enough is dwell. Um, what does it mean to dwell together in unity? I think there's so much of brotherhood is being together. To be, to have that shared experience where you're standing next to your brother in um, a fight with depression, in a fight with lust or pornography and masturbation. To be able to dwell with each other in that hurt allows you to understand and I'm gonna say step out in the power and grace and truth of Christ. When I came to Bucks, and, and kind of the motto of Bucks was that these are lifelong brothers, that was something that I was like, okay, a little skeptical. Like, I get the idea. I think it's a great idea and a necessary idea. You know, you hear these stories about 80-year-old guys who 
are still hanging out with their friends from college, uh, and that's something that I'm like, wow, that's you know, even on a secular level, very cool, but on a on a Christian level, just so much more meaningful to have the common bond of Jesus Christ and have a relationship that lasts for your entire life. And so. The idea of Lifelong Brotherhood to me was something that I was like, this is what I want. As a member, I was like, all right, these guys are really cool. Uh, they're definitely my friends. They definitely care about me. Um, and as I've gone through struggles in college, they have been there to love and support me as Christ has. And it was almost like my perspective on it was as soon as college ends, I'll stop talking to them. We'll all move to different areas of this country and we'll make new friends. Since graduating, I can say that has definitely not been the case. I feel very blessed. Uh, to have that be the case that I still am, am with these guys in a way that you know even some of the ones that have moved across the country I still communicate with them in a in a meaningful and intimate way on a regular basis um, and do have brothers that I can turn to even now three years removed from college that I know love and support me and I would say even in a in a more meaningful and deeper way than that they did in college we've all gone through more and we've all known each other longer um, and our our bonds of brotherhood have, have only grown since college. Lifelong brotherhood to me is kind of a funny term because I think it extends beyond so much more than that. For anyone who's, who's wondering whether or not they should support Bucks, I know from my life, you know, you know, it's just had an eternal impact and, and the Lord has used it in such a way to encourage me, to cause me to pursue Christ, and then to empower and equip me really to uh, look to make disciples, people who are also, I can encourage and show the value in pursuing Jesus because I think that's really the purpose and goal of our lives. And, and I think that Bucks has been an integral part of that by God's grace.